So, and this uh, solved element looks something like this, it has an angle. And uh, as you can see, there are two discharges. One is a uh, little bit more rich in oil, and that is called overflow. And the cleaner water is underflow. And this is a standard terminology in hydrocyclone uh, literature. Now, in particular, I was interested in modeling how much oil is going in here and how much oil is going in there. Then clearly, the separation is happening along the length. So that that tells me that I have to discretize the system uh, in a in the x direction, in the axial direction, to be able to quantify how the separation is evolving along the length. At the same time, the separation is not only happening along the length; it's actually happening in the radial direction. That's why we see more concentration of oil towards the center and less on the outer edges. So that also means that I need to discretize the system in the radial direction. That resulted in a discretization of this onion ring type where I discretize them in the axial direction as well as in the radial direction. So 12 in this direction and 12 in that direction is what I used. Uh, so in total I had a 144 control volumes uh, to write down my model. I wrote down the model, the, the equation that I showed initially the, the main equation which I applied on these onion rings, each of them, 144 of them. And here you see that there is an inflow in x direction and there is an outflow in the x direction. Then because of the oil coming from the out, uh, radially outward to radially inward, there is a, a flow from radially outward to inward and similarly radially inward it is going, from, from the inner edge it is going out in the further uh, towards the center. And then you have to quanti quantify the areas and to write down the fluxes. And you end up with, uh, with an equation that can quantify uh, in, a, in a differential equation <coughs> how much oil is in this control volume uh, over time. Secondly, I considered uh, a plug flow kind of uh, flow uh, characteristic inside the uh, hydrocyclone where the outermost is uh, also a plug with the with the velocity given by the flow that is here divided by the area in that part and the same story for this inner part that gives me the axial velocity and the radial velocity that is going to govern here is given by Stokes law overall the model structure results in something like this where we have the hydrocyclone model it is given the inlet conditions, which is the inlet flow and the concentration of oil in the inlet flow as the inputs. And then we have a decision variable of how much to take out from here. If we take too much out, then it's going to be cleaner water. So there is a decision to be made, which is the split. So if this is 100, whether we take out 1% or 2% here and rest here, or we take 5% here and 95%, that's a decision to be made. So that, uh, that functions as a control input to my model and then we have the output as the remaining purity in the outgoing stream which is the water how clean is it if we started with 100 ppm do we end up with 30 ppm or uh, and so on so this was the model and here I demonstrated like how an oil trajectory oil droplet trajectory will look like it will just start somewhere here and it will try to go towards the center and leave from this outlet the first result is, a, uh, is the result of steady state uh, simulation of the model and it tells me on, along the length, along the radius, what is the profile in terms of oil flow which is uh, in, the radial, uh, in the axial direction, the real flow multiplied by the, the concentration of the oil which so in a sense what is the oil uh, going in into these different uh, control volumes. So, Along, so this is the starting part. Here we see a fairly uniform uh, distribution, but this, this change, this difference is because of the different flows in the in, in inner part and the outer part. And then, as you see that towards the end, uh, the in central part becomes much more uh, oil rich compared to the outer part, and that's uh, clear proof that the model, what the model does. So, uh, to analyze uh, this, system further we wanted to develop a controller 
And uh, so this part stays the same. It's the same hydrocyclone model with the two uh, uh, disturbance inputs, which is the inflow and the inlet oil cut. And this is the control decision that we have to make. And that has been made using the controller. Uh, and this controller is an oil and water controller. So what it tries to do, it, it is given a set point, And that set point is the oil and water set point. And then the hydrocyclone model produces the oil content in the clean water. And then it tries to control this to the specific set point using the degree of freedom we have. Whether you can call it a split of the flow or you can call it the overflow. So this is the closed loop result where we show the controller and this is the control input, the overflow. This is the uh, controlled output uh, or the controlled variable and here we, uh, we keep it to 150 ppm and, and then we reduce it further to 120 ppm. So, this uh, result is trying to show that the disturbances, which are these two, they are given some steps at uh, two different points. Whether our control method is able to uh, reject the disturbances, which it is doing, it is coming back to the 150 ppm uh, um, set point in both the cases, and later we also change the set point to see if it re how does it respond. So that was about uh, chapter 5. Now I will move to the next chapter, which is chapter 6. And in this chapter, I uh, looked at the next equipment uh, in, the, in the separation system that I was interested in studying, and that was compact flotation unit. It's an interesting equipment, uh, I think. And here you see that it is, has a cylindrical vessel. There is a gas that is injected here, which forms some bubbles and bubbles they travel upwards. There is an oily discharge, oily water which contains very very little amount of oil in the range of 100, maybe 50 ppm, maybe 20 ppm. And then that water then goes through a kind of a swirling motion which causes some of the oil to go upwards, the rest of the water goes down which still contains a little bit of remaining oil and that goes through this uh, flotation section and in this flotation section, some of the gas bubbles, they catch these oil droplets and take, take them up to the top. What that does, it makes the water cleaner and cleaner as it travels downwards. And finally, you have a very clean water outlet. So that is basically com compact flotation unit. Compact flotation unit model uh, I developed uh, uh, using a... Uh, um, using this approach, which looks very complicated, I'm going to break it down very quickly. So first, <laughs> first I have this initial soil separation part. What I say is, uh, we have again some inflow, which contains some oil in it, in terms of uh, fraction, and this is the same thing in terms of PPM. So uh, this flow comes in and goes into a sorting motion. After the sorting motion, what happens is, part of the water is going to get cleaner and uh, some of the oil will uh, go upwards and that is demonstrated by this curve where we say soil intensity as a function of soil split. What is soil split? Well, the if there is like 100 ppm coming in, then only 80 ppm going down. 100 ppm water coming in and now only 80 ppm going down, that means there is a separation already happening in this initial separation part. And that is a function of the flow itself. If the flow is too high, there is going to be no separation. So it will be the same. If, the, if it is somewhere in between, then you get some separation. And it is describing the fraction, the thing that is going down and the thing that is coming in. So it takes uh, part of the separation work. Rest of the thing goes down. And we have an area called flotation zone. And in flotation, to model this flotation zone, I tried to write the population of three entities. The first is the population of uh, gas bubbles. Second is the population of oil droplets. And the third is the population of oil droplets plus uh, bubbles, which is, in my uh, thesis, it's called loaded bubbles. And the bubbles which are without the droplets, they are called free bubbles. So here you see that the, the free bubbles, they, they start at the bottom and they start to travel upwards 
and in a in a small control volume we can write down the mass balance the rate of uh, free bubbles coming in and the rate of free bubbles going out rate of loaded bubbles coming in and the rate of loaded bubbles going out and the, and the droplets are traveling downwards that's why they have a different direction and then at the bottom we can we can find out how many what is the droplet concentration at the bottom and that will can that can be that can be converted into the ppm count uh, in the cleaner water we also have a reject stream which contains all the oil that uh, goes up as well as the gas remember we are injecting gas here which needs to be removed at the top uh, that goes out from a stream called reject and that there we have gas oil and part of the rest of it is water that's why we call this flow reject flow and then we describe the the concentration there in terms of volume fractions of gas in there and volume fraction of oil in there and rest will be water and we also have a way to model the pressure at the end we have the processed water which has the flow of the water and the concentration of uh, the oil in there and uh, as you can so the the way to model uh, the way to model the the loading phenomenon that when the oil bubbles and oil droplets and the gas bubbles combine to become loaded bubbles is uh, described by this equation and uh, we are free bubble plus oil droplet it's like regular chemical reaction kind of equation it's just that it's not chemical in nature it's physical in nature and uh, this is sort of the main workhorse for for the flotation zone uh, model we also model the liquid holdup which talks about in this whole separator how much is the liquid fraction so in total uh, the model to derive this model we considered a cylindrical a cylindrical volume and we divided it into 10 sections in the middle and one at the top and one at the bottom so in total there are 12 sections uh, since there is uh, its uniformity in uh, radially so we didn't need to dis um, create onion rings in this case uh, in the top section we have a different set, set of equations for the model in the bottom section we have a different set of equations and that is because the gas is injected between the bottom section and the flotation section so then there forms a boundary condition for uh, for the gas or anything that relates to the gas so that will affect the um, the free bubble density entering and the same story that happens here that we consider that uh, the water is uh, with the oil droplets is injected in between the the top section and the flotation section so that affects the boundary condition that uh, that is there so in in essence uh, the model results into something like this the cfu model takes two inputs or two disturbance inputs that we are not precisely controlling which are which are upstream uh, the inflow and the oil content in the inflow or if it is uh, written in the ppm numbers then it is ppm in and then it is producing three outputs three main important outputs which is uh, out uh, purity of the water in the outlet uh, of the water so maybe it started with uh, 100 ppm and is going down to 50 ppm or so on <coughs> 